What's up, pitchers? I'm Coach Dan Blewett. In today's video, let's talk about the three types of pitchers in baseball. All right, so if you're new here, I'm Coach Dan Blewett. On my channel here, I do tons of videos about pitching, strategy, mindset, arm care, strength training, you name it. So if you're new here, check out the description links below for my two baseball books, my online courses, and more helpful videos that I'll probably allude to in this one. So number one, today let's talk about the three types of pitchers, and this is starters, relievers, and long relievers. And they all have a different skill set, so I want to go over each one, and then you can start to figure out where you probably fit, or for coaches, where these kids that you train or you coach are going to fit. So number one, let's talk about starters. So obviously everyone one wants to be a starter because you get to pitch more. Um, of course, some players like to be relievers because they're in, or they at least have the opportunity to be in every single game. For starters, it can definitely be a little bit of a mental grind where you only pitch one once a week or once every five days, whatever it is, you can sort of get a little disconnected. So with starters, number one, mentality wise, you need to be able to pace yourself a little bit better. You still throw like 98% as hard as you can, but it's just not the same as a reliever. Anyone that says it is, they've never, they've never done both. Um, you definitely mentally pace yourself a little more. You, you know, as a reliever, especially you can go out there for one inning or get put in a really tight jam. And it's like mentally like a really like a violent fight. And when it's done, you get out of that inning, you like sort of have like this emotional release where you're like, you know, you're done, you got through it. And starters, you can't have that. You can't have that in the first inning where you're so amped up and you get your three outs and then you have that like emotional fall and then you got to pitch six more innings. So you really sort of have to pace yourself mentally and emotionally. And some starters are a lot better than that. Uh, than than others and they're better cut out for being a starter I should say because they have this better sort of pacer mentality so it's not just about pacing yourself from like a from an intensity standpoint physically because again you still throw almost as hard as you can as a starter it's not like Jacob deGrom is throwing 99 and he's got 107 in the tank he's throwing pretty much as hard as he can save a little bit but emotionally and mentally there's a lot more of a pacing mechanism there because you got to think through the game. You have to get better as the game goes on. You have to outsmart hitters a little bit and learn what do they do the first time around, et cetera, et cetera. So you have to have that mindset and that intelligence. Number two, you have to be able to get righties and lefties out to be an effective starter. This isn't talked about that much, but it's important. If you're a guy that can only get lefties out or you can only get righties out and you don't have a good pitch, like if you're right and you don't have something good that'll get a lefty to swing and miss, it's hard to be a starter because you're going to face teams that have three lefties in the lineup sometimes, and you're going to face all of them, you know, three, sometimes four times through the order. And now you got nine at bats against lefties and you just suck against lefties. Like that's not, that doesn't play well. So to be able to be a closer or to be a starting pitcher, you have to be able to get both lefties and righties out. If you can only do one, then you get kind of relegated into like a sort of spot role where you're like the loogie, the left-handed one out guy, or you're the righty that can come in and just get righties out. So Keep that in mind. You have to be able to get righties and lefties out as a starter. You have to be obviously a premier strike thrower. And that means for seven innings of work, two walks, that's pretty much par for the course. Uh, if you can't do that, just hard to be able to get deep enough into games without your pitch count being up. And even if you're not walking as many guys, you've got to be thrifty and get guys out in three pitches or less. I mean, you just have to be able to get them to swing the bat early in the count it can't be 2-2 and here comes the fifth pitch to every single hitter it's just not going to work out well the other two things that are important about being a starter you need to have a three pitch mix very few starters i mean you won't see any in the major leagues only have two pitches it's always three is the standard and then a fourth as you start to get sort of old and salty and you can all right now i can throw a cutter in here i can use this other pitch i throw a curveball and a slider because i'll do this one to this guy and this one to that guy when you're younger, and this is high school and college, pretty much just the three pitches is, is going to be fine, especially if one's a really good out pitch. The other one's just an average pitch. That's typically how it goes. You're not going to need four pitches to get college hitters out. They're just not good enough to, to need that. So if you have a good three-pitch mix, then you're set. If you, if you don't have three viable pitches that you can throw for strikes, then you probably can't be a starter, at least not in college. You could, you could definitely get away with it in high school, but it gets harder to go, especially because if you are going to pitch six innings, you can't find your slider, and that's your only secondary pitch. Now you're a one-pitch pitcher, and it's pretty hard to get through six innings only throwing fastballs. And then lastly, you want to have an out pitch. An out pitch is a, is a pitch that you can reliably get a swing and miss with when you throw it well. So that's like, for me, I had a pretty nasty curveball. So if I really need to get a guy to swing and miss, I knew that if I could throw a curveball that bounced on the plate, 
probably going to get the swing and miss that I want in a one, two or O2 count, something like that. So you need to have an out pitch to be able to bail yourself out of jams because you're typically going to be in two jams per game. And if you can't get yourself out of those jams, it's going to be tough. So let's go on to relievers. Relievers have a different skill set. Um, typically, they're going to be two pitch guys. Typically, they're going to be th hard throwers. And we're talking about short relievers right now. They're going to be hard throwers. And they're going to have an out pitch, definitely. So of the two pitches, they're going to throw hard. So their fastball is going to be above average. And their out pitch is going to be above average. That's sort of a given. So if, you've, if you're a reliever and you don't throw harder than average and your secondary pitch is not something that can really get guys to swing and miss that often, you probably can't be like a setup man or a closer. It's just not going to happen. So to be, again, like the seventh, eighth, or ninth inning guy, that those really important short inning relievers, it's not going to happen unless you could throw pretty hard or you have like a really funky delivery and you've got some weird stuff um, or you've got a pretty legitimate out pitch. So you've got to have those skills and you also need to have that like bulldog mentality. You can't be afraid of going in when you're in a jam. That's when they need relievers, right? They're going to need you to go in second and third and no one out sometimes and bail the team out. That's your job. And, uh, and lastly, like you've got to be able to throw strikes. I mean, you think of like, oh, if you're not a starter and you don't throw a ton of strikes, we'll make you a reliever. Really, you just can't play baseball at a high level if you can't throw strikes. When you have a guy that's coming in in a jam like that in the seventh inning and he walks the first hitter, well, crap, why do we put him in, right? I mean, you see it all the time in pro ball. If guys walk the first hitter when they come in, just get them out of there. Get someone else that can throw strikes because you have no chance of getting out of a jam. You have no chance of putting up a clean inning if you walk the first batter. So you have to be able to throw strikes, and this is right out of the gate. It's not like you get a couple of pitches and, you, you know, you get to – a lot of pitches seem like, oh, I just got to get in the groove. I got to get used to the game mound. Like, you know, I got to adjust. Relievers are very good at running out there and pounding strike one in a tough situation in front of a lot of people in, a, in, a, in the end of the game. I mean, that's just what a reliever is. So even though the best strike throwers are typically starters, you got to throw a lot of strikes to be an effective reliever. I mean, it, it over, sometimes get overlooked that, that aspect of it, but... I was a much better reliever later in my career when I started just being more in tune with my body and mentally strong and just like wasn't afraid to compete in the way of the plate where now I could very reliably get that first strike and just not walk hitters. And that's that's important because, again, your margin for error as a short reliever is very slim. So giving up free bases is a no, no. But you might might you might make some of your pitchers on your staff. If I'm talking to a coach. You might make guys into relievers when. Maybe they just don't like the whole, like, I'm, I got to wait a whole week to pitch again. Maybe they want to be more involved in games. Maybe they don't like mentally having to be in it for six innings. Maybe their arm doesn't bounce back that well after 100 pitches. Maybe they're just good for a short period of time, then their command starts to go away. Everyone's different, so you don't want to try to fit everyone into the mold. Obviously, your best pitchers, you do want to make them starters because it provides way more value for your team. This has been proven without a doubt with all the high uh, high level analytics that major league baseball does with their advanced statistics the more innings you get out of your best pitchers the the more value they provide to your team so if you have if you could get 200 innings out of Aroldis chapman you would absolutely take that every time if you could you would take him out of the closer role and make him a starter but he's just not built to be a starter he's just that's just the way he is so when you can take those guys, you would never take a Jacob DeGrom and make him a closer, even if he would be 60 for 60 in saves. He's much better giving your team 200 innings. It just provides so much more game value and, and, and win value. So that said, you want to try to find pitchers that just don't do well as starters, or you want to give them a chance and see if they can fit that mold better. Some guys like just going in there and brawling for one or two innings, spending it all, being high intensity emotionally, get in and get out and be done. And that's fine. So just figure out where they fit role wise and how they can best help your team. Lastly, this is the third category. This is long relievers. And this is, I mean, relatively short. And if you don't like this, I'm sorry, but long relievers are just guys that aren't, they're like starters, but they just aren't good enough to be in the starting rotation where they don't have great command or they have probably decent command, but they just don't have like a good out pitch. They can't get a lot of guys to swing and miss. They're basically just like they fit that starter mold where they do typically throw a lot of strikes. They can eat up innings, but they're just not going to get a lot of strikeouts. They're going to have a tougher time stranding uh, runners on base because they can't, again, get a lot of swings and misses. So it's really just like if you had your best four starters and then the next two guys who definitely fit the starter mold, strike throwing wise and like mindset pacer kind of kind of kind of mold, 
then you'd make them into your long relievers. You wouldn't take those next two guys and put them in the back of your bullpen if they don't have the premium velocity and premium out pitch. So basically, all the pitchers that don't have the out pitch and the premium like pitch ability and the strikeout kind of stuff, they're going to end up being your long relievers. Um, so those are pretty much the three big categories because relievers are not all built the same. The guy that's going to go in there and throw two, three, four innings or mop up a game when a starter only goes four innings, that's a guy who's not going to go in there and just blow it out and throw 98 miles per hour. That's going to be the guy in the bullpen in the big leagues who throws, you know, 90 to 94, who has a slider that's like good but not great. You know, he maybe walks a few more guys than a starter would, whatever. But long relievers, they find they kind of fall in between. They're not quite a starter, but they're also next in line to be a starter if a starter goes down because they can have that same mindset, eat up five innings, throw a lot of strikes, keep the team in the game. But again, they're just going to have a tougher time getting out of jams and getting the premium hitters to swing and miss, which is an important part of being an effective pitcher. All right. So leave me a comment below. Did these make sense? What qualities of good pitchers did I miss? Is there anything that I overlooked? Let me know. All right. Thanks again for watching. I'm Coach Tam Blewett. Check out the description below. Share this with a friend. Subscribe if you haven't yet. And I'll see you in the next video.